strategic healing. And now here's Jason. Okay, everybody. Hi, this is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. And uh, the number to call in is 313-272-5600. You can also see me live on my Facebook page. This is the Facebook page is Strategic Healing. You can send in your questions. Uh, you can call in. Uh, I've got some questions that we've already put together, but look forward to hearing from you. Look forward to hearing you out there. And, and I know in term, this is a show on health. And this week uh, in particular, people are boy, they are really, really going after you in terms of, of being healthy. But they're going after you in terms of being afraid, being afraid of what can happen and what's out there, especially this virus that's out there. And I'm here to put you at ease. This virus is, is it's, it's the same virus. It's, in fact, it's categorized as actually the common cold, the common, um, there's been people who have done research on this and the name of this virus that people are all up in arms about. You can look at handy wipes and things like that that have been years old and it's, the, the, the name is there. So it's been around for, for quite a while. And, uh, but again, viruses are, are a, a real definite concern and viruses are something that oftentimes we have them <clears throat> and when we get, say, sick from a virus, it's they're waking up. So sometimes it's not even that we've even come in contact. It's not even that we, you know, someone sneezed and we breathed it or we touched it or something like that. Now I'll tell you, uh, this the Purell and those handy wipes and things like that. Uh, if you're real concerned, start using them. Um, but I'm going to tell you, they are they do damage your immune system as well. So I'm going to talk about the whole thing of how do you fix your immune system. Uh, and I'm here to set your, your, your mind at ease, which is do not be afraid because fear is the thing that also weakens your immune system. Fear draws this in. You gotta understand these are living life forms that have essentially ears and mouths and, uh, and they are able to listen and they're able to speak. They speak, they communicate through multiple different ways of communication. They communicate with each other and they communicate with other viruses. They communicate with uh, uh, parasites. They communicate with uh, bacteria and other living life forms. And it's kind of like a, a gang war where they kind of gang up on you. But they're just showing up to a bad neighborhood, that's all. So clean up the neighborhood and then they go away and uh, they can actually go dormant. Um, so let me give you some great things, great tips. I talked about it last week, but it, it stands to reason. Let's talk about it again. It's what's called the antiviral diet. You can adopt what's called the antiviral diet, which is it's high lysine, low arginine. These are amino acids that are in foods, in particular in proteins. That's what, uh, when we eat protein, we are getting building blocks, but we're getting the amino acids. And the amino acids are what our DNA is made out of. It's what, our, it's what their DNA is made out of too, because they are DNA. Now, viruses, it's debatable. They, in terms of, you know, are they alive? Because uh, essentially, Viruses are only RNA, which is not DNA. There's DNA and there's RNA, but it, it acts like it's alive. It, it is able to uh, connect to your cells and then hack your cells and steer intelligently your cells to grow um, in a, a pattern that's not healthy for you. So it doesn't matter. They're living life forms. And so they're made out of these things. So an antiviral diet, which is high in lysine. So uh, you can take lysine, you can go to the health food store, or you can go to, let's say, Whole Foods, and you're just getting a lysine. And you take these lysine capsules, you're going to take about three of them. Usually they're 1,000 milligrams, and uh, no, they're 500 milligrams. And so you get the ones at 500 milligrams and take three. So about 1,500 milligrams. Now, it's, it's important to remember that since they're amino acids, they're amino acids that are in proteins, you want to take these on an empty stomach. So that means the best time to take them as soon as you wake up because you have been fasting. You got an, unless you are eating while you're sleeping, which most people are not, <laughs> and uh, then your stomach is empty. So then when you take the lysine, then it goes into an empty stomach, all right? So that's number one, start taking some lysine. Number two, start cutting out the arginine foods or the ones that are high in the ratio of arginine to lysine. So let me tell you, these are the ones to cut out. 
do not eat these ones and just weak them, you know, wean them out of your diet. And there's plenty of foods that you can eat that are not high in arginine, are very high in lysine, and they taste great and they're great. So let's start with foods to avoid. Almonds, brown rice, chocolate, sunflower seeds, whole wheat bread, peanuts and pita butter, pecans, oatmeal, soybeans, corn, millet, onions, Brussels sprouts, sesame seeds, split peas, walnuts, wheat germ, and caffeine. Now, these are the things to avoid. These are the things that you should just cut these out. Now, there are foods that you should encourage, meaning eat as much of these as you can during this time when you are increasing the lysine. Brewer's yeast, does that mean, so people says, do I get to drink beer? <laughs> yeah, you do, actually. Drink a good beer. Drink, um... Bell's beer here in Michigan, uh, they're still raw and unfiltered. Um, it is um, uh, probiotics. They're the only company around that really still does that. So these, these microbrews are, are really good. But that Bell's Brewery, uh, these guys back in the 1980s, I believe, late, uh, late 1980s, they got on planes and they flew over to Europe and they went to the oldest breweries in the world and they figured out how to do this and they still do it the old world method. Uh, some of their, their grains are actually uh, organic, local organic, um, but they do it the correct way and they do not pasteurize it, meaning they don't kill it and they don't filter it either. So you'll still see some little bits in some of the, some of the brews. Um, uh, but it's it's good because it is high in uh, the brewer's yeast is high, very high in B12. You can actually in the health food store you can get what's called nutritional yeast or brewer's yeast, and you can add it to foods. Milk products. So if people say are tolerable to milk products, meaning you're not lactose intolerant, milk products that would be milk that would be cheese and any of the animal milks. So we're talking about cow milk, sheep milk, goat milk. Um, here in Michigan, you can actually even get camel milk at uh, Zerbo's. They sell it in uh, the frozen food section, and that one's raw. You can still get that one raw. Um, people that have problem digesting, for instance, ha are lactose intolerant. They can, you can get a lactose-free milk. Um, don't really recommend that one because it's highly processed. You can eat the cheeses, which are the hot, the hard cheeses, the uh, aged like two to three years. The hard cheeses like Parmesan, Parmesan Reggiano. Uh, if a cheese is aged more than eighteen months, then all of the lactose is converted to galactose. So eat an aged cheese, um, yogurts, um, kefir, these things. Okay. The other ones that are very good, high in the lysine to arginine, which is just the meats. So we got beef pork, poultry, turkey, uh, turkey, chicken, seafood, uh, sardines, shrimp, uh, fish, these different types of things. They're very, very good, very high in the lysine, low on arginine. And spinach, as far as a vegetable. So vegetable, you can you know, eat the raw spinach, you can eat it uh, steamed, uh, cooked spinach, canned spinach even, you can eat that. Um, again, you're doing this to kind of bump up your system so that you can fight virus and you can actually make virus go dormant, make it go sleep. Fair foods are eggs. Most vegetables, even potatoes, they're fair. Yeah, they're equal amounts lysine to arginine. So, but free foods, these are free. You can eat to your heart's descent, uh, content is lettuce and uh, citrus fruit. So any of the lettuces, whether it's head lettuce, that's leaf lettuce, that's romaine lettuce, all of these things, eat your salads, eat your salads with some hard boiled eggs on it and some cheese on it, boy, and a little bit of meat chopped up, you know, one of those kind of make your own kind of a cob salad or, or even a chef's salad type of thing. Um, try to avoid the, like for instance, the lunch meats that have, um, uh, what is it, nitrates in it, but you can get nitrate-free lunch meats and stuff like that. Um, great, you can eat that to your heart's content and that's gonna feed your body's ability to fight off virus, okay? And, uh, and as again, it's make virus go dormant. There's another thing that I'm gonna recommend, this virus in particular, <clears throat> as well as a lot of them, they, how they get into your body is different, okay? But the rhinovirus, which is the common cold, and this other one, um, it gets in through breathing, which means it gets in through the mu mucosal membranes, meaning you touch your finger, someone sneezes on something, you touch your finger and you touch your eye, you touch your nostril, you touch your ear, you touch your mouth, you touch your genitals. These things are what's called mucosal membranes. And there is something that we can take that 
increases the ability, it thickens the mucos, most mucosal membranes, meaning creates a wall so that they can't get through, like build the wall. That is vitamin D with K2. Vitamin D, and we live in Michigan and we are away from the sunshine, so get your vitamin D. And vitamin D with the K2, it is recommend that you're doing, uh, if you've got normal levels between two to 5,000 IUs, but if you are concerned, I would bump it up to anywhere between 10 to 15,000. You can even go up to 20,000 for a week, 20,000 units per day. Um, but you know, let's say, let's stick with between five to 10,000 uh, I units of vitamin D with K2. Now vitamin D, vitamin D helps to support the mucosal membranes, um, but it also helps to send calcium to all of, everywhere it needs to go to. It needs to go to your bones, but it also needs to go to your muscles. That's the most important thing of where, vit where calcium needs to go to. So I'm going to come back to this to a second, but I've got a phone call here, and let's take your phone call. Hey, caller, how are you? Hello? I'm not hearing you. I'm missing. Are you there? Hello? I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. What's your, what's your, what's your question, caller? Yeah. Uh, I'd love to speak uh, that uh, President Trump told about the space, uh, the space force. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> say that again. Say that. Say that last part again. Uh huh. No, I did not see the speech. But yeah, describe it to me. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm Right. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Right. Mm hmm Yes. Yes. Mm hmm And and it says we it is accounted for life that we. Mm hmm Okay. Mm hmm Okay. All right. Mm hmm Right. Mm hmm Okay. Mm hmm Correct. Okay, well, th this is the show on health here, but uh, let me go to that. Let me let me turn this around, this question on to, you know, we don't know what time is going to be. We don't know how much time we have, and, and you can say that we, we think that it's this much time, and, but the point is, is to make the best of your time. And you spoke about that man who was 100 years old, and, uh, you know, so the point is, is how do we get... Okay, all right. Well, you know, the thing is, is... So, you know, going to Mars is, uh, you know, that's something that is very debatable because, again, could you go to Mars? Could you do this? Uh, again, even when we... Okay. All right. It... Mm -hmm. Correct. And so, so the point is, is what it's basically saying is, is make the most of your time here now and make the most of, of, of what you've got going here right now. And there's so much. So rather than going ahead and building a planet somewhere else, why don't you build a better world here? Now, let me tell you what I've done with my life. Yeah, let me tell you what I've done with this world is in my own personal sense, and it starts with your own, you know, you're talking about doing government programs and things like that. I suggest that you take care of your own world. You do your own world. You do your own family. Well, let me tell you what I've done with my world is I, people say, okay, you complain about the foods and you complain about how unhealthy things, what are you going to do? You're going to make your own food? I... I do that. 
I do that. I make my own food. I, my name is Jason. My name is Jason. I have a farm. I have, I have, okay. All right, excellent. So as I said, this is put your focus on, on your own world, which is I have, yeah, I have, uh, I have cows, I have sheep, I have chicken, we've, uh, you know, turkeys, we've got bees. Um, we do our, we grow up. Yes, I'm married and I, we grow all our own food and we, I just turned 50. So, yep, just turned 50. It, and so, as I said, is, is, you know, we can debate about these different things, but it really is smart to take your, take your time and fix your own world. Fix your, because if you're going to, if you're going to fix this planet, you got to start with only what you can handle. And so start with and change your food and change your lifestyle. And I'm all, yep, that's right. Yep. So, hey, I'm going to get back. I got another uh, uh, interest. I got to get something else here. So thank you for your call. And I'm going to let you go here. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can get a hold of, again. He said, how can you reach me? Um, you can go to my Facebook, which is Strategic Healing. Um, you can always see uh, my shows when I then archive them on my YouTube channel, which is that's Jason Eagle QRA. You can go to my website, which is strategichealing.us. And uh, now let's get back into that, uh, that other issue, which is, again, the vitamin D3, which is building up the mucosal lining, um, building up. Um, now, let me get this also to this one, because this leads into another question that I had, which is about bladder health. Vitamin D is very, very important because the bladder is lined with a special mucosal lining. So when people get, say, bladder infections and things like that, and, uh, you know, the research states that when people get, say, um, bladder tumors, tumors take between 20 to 30 years in the bladder. They're very, very slow growing, which means if they're even growing and you do the right things, you've got time to change that and make them reverse the other way. So the mucosal lining that's inside the bladder, because think about the bladder. The bladder is a, is a bag that holds on to your urine, which is when your body detoxifies and takes toxins out of your blood and out of your system, waste products, all of your blood is filtered through your kidneys and you got two kidneys. And then these two kidneys have these tubes that are called the ureters and those go down to a central um, bulb, which is that is your bladder and your bladder is just kind of like a... Um, a hole or a, a, like a bag, okay? And as it fills up and fills up and when it gets really full, then it triggers that you have to go to the bathroom, that you have to urinate, right? Well, when this urine is sitting inside there, it's it's a perfect breeding ground for any type of bacteria. It's a petri dish, which is it's dark, it's warm, it's moist, it's a perfect place for stuff to grow. And so there are waste products that grow into our into our urine. Now our bladder has a very special lining that keeps that because see these infections, these little things that are living there, they're trying to get into us. They grow there and then they go, you know, it's like a, a mission. They're like the Marines. They want to have a beachhead. They want to get in there. But they got to get through this lining first. And as we age, that lining starts to break down and it can become compromised and things like that. So we can rebuild that lining up with number one with the D3, okay? Uh, number two, we can use the, the bioflavonoids, which is the ultra pollen. Um, also, uh, bioflavonoids is the vitamin C compounds. So there's a whole bunch of bioflavonoids that are in the natural vitamin Cs. And the, um, uh, the vitamin C is known as a bioflavonoid. So um, the, uh, what is it, the ultra pollen, which are these a bunch of different pollens, which are super, super high in these, what's called bioflavonoids. That helps to rebuild the uh, lining and strengthen the smooth muscle tissue, which is the inside of that bag is a lining and then it's also a muscle because it has to contract, has to contract to squeeze that pee out, right? Um, then uh, another thing that has been shown with a lot of bladder health is that a lot of interference fields or injuries to the spine, in the legs or in the spine, injuries to the low back. 
So that's where I do the mud packs. We can test you for the mud packs. And a lot of times I've had people that have just chronic, you know, you get a woman that's 40, 50 years old and you know she leaks urine or you've got a, a man that's 40, 50, 60 years old and he leaks urine. And, we, you know, we say that it's his prostate and we say, well, it, it could just be the uh, muscles of the bladder, meaning it doesn't hold the sphincter of the bladder. It, it, it is weak. And so we can rebuild that muscle and you can find that, that women or men that it were, were leaking urine, they don't leak it anymore or that they can full, fully eliminate without having dribbles and things like that. That's a muscle. So you, we rebuild the muscle. Um, and again, if the muscles are being sedated by the nerves, then we can rebuild those nerves up with the uh, mud packs. Another thing that has been shown to be really, really helpful for the bladder, basically everything in the body, but the bladder in particular is the uh, manos, which comes from aloe. So the aloe manin is this healing sugar. Now this attaches to the bladder wall so that the uh, bacteria won't. Our body is so uniquely designed. So it's kind of like a, you know, a greased pig. <laughs> it's really hard to catch. So when your body is very healthy, uh, you are constantly replacing the lining of the bladder, and it is this lining that keeps things from attaching. It's all also thick enough so that they can't through, but again, it, it makes it slippery so that the bacteria can't cling to that and then start burrowing in and start growing into that. So that's where the aloe manis comes in. So for bladder health, uh, like I said, we're looking at ultra pollen, we're looking at the aloe manin, we're looking at possibly some back traumas and things like that. Um, and then I would also recommend, since it is a muscle, go to my YouTube channel and you can go to my psoas videos. There's a psoas one and then there's a psoas two. Psoas two in particular shows uh, there's these exercises in particular to rebuild. So this is for people with a prolapsed um, uterus or a prolapsed colon or people with, um, let's say, rectal fissures, or even hemorrhoids, or things like that. It's all related. It's all related to a weak pelvic muscles, and also core muscles that actually pull this stuff back up, and keeps it in there, and actually massages the bladder and kidneys. It's this video that I have attached. It's what's called Iron Shirt Qigong. Iron Shirt Qigong is this specific, it's five specific types of exercises that's devised by these um, Shaolin monks. Um, these guys that were, you know, when you see the Kung Fu guys, those Kung Fu movies that where you can hit them with a, 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 a piece of wood and it breaks on them and it doesn't break their bones. It's like, they called it Iron Shirt because it's as if they were wearing an iron shirt. You couldn't, you couldn't even cut them with a sword. Um, because it was the ability for the body to um, build this, this, it's hard to describe, but it, we don't need to learn that. But what we do need to learn from these videos is how to exercise the pelvic floor muscles. We, you know, we call them Kegels. Kegels, uh, so when women are trying to learn, you know, to get ready for birth, they do their Kegel exercises or even after they've had a baby so that they don't leak urine. It's the Kegel exercises. That's just one type of these exercises. This pelvic floor is not just right there. It's not just the floor. It goes all the way up inside your body and deep inside your back. And these are your core muscles. And so when we have these problems of these organs, and the falling out of these organs and the weakness of these organs, it's a weakness of this muscle. And most people have not used these muscles. So the Iron Shirt Jigong teaches you how to feel where they are, how to, oh, I can make that move. But then it's like a weak muscle that any muscle, if you know how to use it and exercise it, you can rebuild it and make it. You know, a person can't use their fingers. You can develop your toes into doing anything. You couldn't do it if you could try right now. But if you try and you start making things move, you'll find that you can start to move things in your body. So like I said, for bladder health and kidney health, there's supplements, there's all kinds of things, but it's also these exercises, meaning could you rebuild your body back up? Could you rebuild it? Could you be like the $6 million man? Do, do, do. We can rebuild him. Yes, you can. Okay. Well, we're coming on the half hour mark here and I'm going to take a commercial. So I'll be right back. How long have you been struggling with your health issues? Are you still living in pain? What kind of skin irritations do you have? Eczema, rashes, acne? 
Is your energy level in the basement? Are you trying to cope with depression or anxiety? Is your tummy always upset? If your body could talk to you, what would it tell you? Well, it does talk to you. It's the listening part that's tricky. But not with the amazing biocommunication technique, QRA, quantum reflex analysis, the highly effective system by which your body can communicate its true needs. Jason Eagle of Strategic Healing in Auburn Hills is your natural health authority, and he is the expert in using QRA to get to the root of your health issues, then develop the plan to get you back to feeling great again. Find out what's really happening with your body with your in-depth QRA evaluation with Jason Eagle. Call 734-985-5891 for your appointment with Jason at Strategic Healing in Auburn Hills. It'll change your life for the better. Call 734-985-5891 today. Okay, everybody, we are back. This is Jason Eagle, your Natural Health Authority. The phone number to call in is 313-272-5600. And I'm going to try and get through a bunch of these. i got a bunch of questions here. So we got one on joint pains, and their doctors have put them on prednisone. Prednisone is one of these drugs that helps to uh, reduce joint pain and other types of pains, reducing inflammation, okay? But it's turning off inflammatory markers, and... Uh, you know, long-term use of prednisone has been shown to actually be pretty damaging. It's not something you want to be on for the rest of your life, and, and it really will shorten your life. And is there something natural? Is there something natural that I can do in replace of the prednisone that works just as good? Uh, yes, there is. And uh, that is what's called the phytozymes. Phytozymes are enzymes. These are what's called proteolytic enzymes. Proteolytic enzymes digest protein. So when you eat food, your liver and your pancreas and your intestines, they secrete these enzymes to do these jobs to break things down. Proteolytic enzymes is the thing that they use in laundry detergent, you know, like the pre-soak type of stuff where they, you know, those commercials where they say, do you got grass stains? Do you got blood stains? Do you got ketchup? These things are really hard to get out. Well, they're protein. And so you squirt this stuff on it and it eats up the protein. Well, phytozymes are that, which is high levels. And in fact, it's a lot of levels. We're talking 15 million PU uh, protease activity. And so that's per two capsules. And that's all we're taking. It's two capsules three times a day. What it does is if you zoom into the joint or the guts or places where you have pain, oftentimes you can see that it's as if something has been duct taped together 15 times. And once the duct tape gets old and hard, you just duct tape over top of that. It is what's called scar tissue. It's what's called adhesions. It's this just a mess, a mess of overgrowth of extra tissue. It's like a hoarder. You walk into their house and you go, oh my goodness, this is just, there's just junk everywhere. Like, how's this thing even supposed to move? It's just, so a lot of times when people hear the crunching and stuff like that, or they say that, you know, I've eroded away the cartilage. Well, it's because it's so full of this hardened fibrotic and excess material that it's just like stepping on Legos. So if you swap, now the prednisone, it doesn't eat that stuff up. It, it doesn't really take it away. It just kind of takes your pain away. It does not dissolve. And so if the pain is being caused by this excess material, wouldn't it be smart to dissolve it? You know, wouldn't it be smart if you're painting over your house or your, you know, door 15 times, it doesn't shut right because it's got, you know, too many layers of paint. Then you have a, a good painter comes in and says, we got to strip off all these layers of paint because it just doesn't work right. That's what the phytozymes does is it literally will go into the body and will start eating up excess protein, excess fibrin, these types of things. Now, it's selective in the sense that your body puts it places where it's needed. It puts it on where the excess material. Now, this does it throughout your whole body. This does it in your heart. This will get to the brain even. So sometimes we have plaque deposits and things that gives people a high risk of stroke or things like that inside the brain. So uh, what the 
Phytozymes do, does is, as I said, is it dissolves excess protein, excess fibrin. So the, the goal is to take it three times a day on an empty stomach. So the first empty stomach one is like I say with the lysine, which as soon as you wake up, before you eat anything, you take two of them. And then the next time, the next two times, you just have to do it three hours after your, your meal. So you eat breakfast and then wait three hours and do another two. Um, you eat lunch, okay, wait three hours, or you eat, you know, dinner, so you've got two other opportunities to get this on an empty stomach. If you take six of these capsules a day over a period of time, and I've had people that have had real bad joint pain that they've been on the, the drugs and other things, and, and once they go on the phytozymes, it's a matter of days. They feel like, wow, you know, people that go on, let's say, the glucosamine chondroitin, to, that's helping to rebuild up a tissue, but if that tissue is surrounded with a bunch of junk, you really want to get that junk out. So I've had so many people have done the glucosamine chondroitin and the MSM, and it doesn't work. Even the turmeric doesn't work very well. Well, you know, if it's if it's blocked, blockaded because of a bunch of excess tissue, if you can't get into your driveway because there's a bunch of broken down cars, you got to get those broken down cars out of the way before you can get in your own driveway. All right, so Jason Eagle, 313-272-5600. That's the number to call in. I'm going to go into another one. Um, this is heart, okay? So people with, I got a couple issues, which is people who have high blood pressure and you want to lower your, you know, you can have, there's definitely medications. And if you do have high blood pressure, you should be working with a cardiologist. You should, but are there some natural things that we can do? Yes, um, blood pressure can be lowered naturally with the fermented beets. Fermented beets, these are organic beets, but they are very high in nitric oxide. And it's been shown to, in two hours, it can lower blood pressure. So, it's, and it's super easy. You just put a scoop of this in some water, maybe even hot water, and put it in a smoothie. I put it in hot water. I'm drinking some of the fermented mushrooms right now. Um, and it's great. It's super easy. And within a couple hours, just one scoop of this, you drink it down. It tastes kind of tart. It doesn't taste bad at all. It has a nice red kind of color. Um, it actually kind of has, like I said, like, kind of like a cranberry kind of tart kind of flavor. It's good. And it will lower your blood pressure within a couple hours. And it works really, really well. And it's natural. And it's rebuilding what's called the nitric oxide levels. It's rebuilding your heart. What, may, what heart medication can say it actually fixes your heart and fixes your vessels, meaning it makes your blood vessels, your veins and your arteries, makes the muscles work better and actually makes the muscles stronger and it makes the diameter of them get bigger so that more blood can flow. Because see, that's part of what's causing high blood pressure is if we have a constriction, then it's there's not as much many bl uh, blood cells that are able to go through the pipes. But if you open up the pipes and get a bigger hose, then the actual pump doesn't have to work as hard. Okay. Now we also get into heart, which is people have been put on st put on statins. Um, I'm going to get back to this. I've got a phone caller here right now. Let me take that call and I'll get back. Hi, caller. I'm here. How can I help you? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. And it can be very, and you've been on it eight years, so it's a long time. And you're talking, you've got sarcoidosis, which is essentially it's scar tissue that's forming in the lungs. Okay. And so what you want to do is, is you want to break up the scar tissue. And again, so now you can stay in the fight on the prednisone while putting the phytozymes, because again, people go, is there going to be an interaction? Your body produces this, your body makes these exact same enzymes. And so this is just putting higher levels of this into your system and it will start to to dissolve the scar tissue, but in particular in the lungs, but all over the body. And then you can start lowering your dose and in fact, eventually go off of the prednisone completely. I have a, a person who, a number of people who've done this. I did it with some other products before, but now this Phytozymes, excuse me, works spectacularly better. 
and it works very very quickly so the phytozymes you can get them here in my, my office and I can I can guide you on how to use them um, but yes this has been shown to absolutely eliminate the prednisone um, you spell it yeah it's called phytozymes you spell it p-h-y-t-o-z-y M-E-S, that's zymes, phytozymes, okay? And it's really, it's, it's, it's what's called proteolytic enzymes. Um, but these are vegetarian-based proteolytic enzymes. And uh, it works spectacular. So I think you'll be really surprised. I think you'll be su super happy. Well, you so much. You're welcome. Okay, look forward to hearing from you. Okay. All right, bye-bye. That's great. That's great. We got that question going. Uh, you know, obviously people out there here and, and again, like he said, he's been on it for eight years and he heard from his doctor. He's heard, you know, it's not really good. But what alternative does he have? He's in so much pain and he's got pain in his lungs as well as it's, it's going to affect breathing problems and things like that. I'm sure he's a person that if he goes out in the cold, like he starts to have like an asthma attack if you breathe too cold because the, you know, the lungs, they have to change shape. But if you got leathery lungs, your lungs are like leather, like an old leather glove. It doesn't change. You know, you ever put a glove on that's just like the glove don't fit. If it, the glove don't fit, <laughs> whatever they said. That's what happens to the lungs. But again, the lungs are one of the fastest healing tissues in the body. Um, the mouth and the tongue are extreme. Like you can cut your tongue and you wake up the next day and it's like, oh my God, it's like it's fixed. The lungs are very, very fast, feel, uh, fast at healing. I have, uh, I did some cadaver research and I, uh, one of the doctors that was doing the lab, because we were looking at one of the um, specimens and you can tell that they were a smoker because the lungs were really, really black. And then the other one was this old lady and you could tell she was not a smoker. Um, lungs were nice and pink and everything like that. And this is what the, the doctor said. He said, if you take a person who, let's say, is a three-pack-a-day smoker, the worst of the worst, and you get them to cut out smoking for five years, half of that damage has disappeared. And then if you get them to smoke, quit smoking for 10 years, if you were to look at those lungs, it's as if they never smoked ever. The lungs are able to repair. So people kind of really worry, have I really done too much damage? Because when people are doing a harmful thing and they want to stop, sometimes they, they, they feel like, ah, like I just, I'm in too far along. I might as well just keep going. It's never too late to quit. Don't keep, quit quitting. And I can tell you this from internally looking at lungs themselves, they can heal. And the lungs, the scar tissue and the stuff that's formed in the lungs, they can heal. You just, so one of the problems with healing of lungs that a lot of people say, if you've scarred your lungs, eh, those scars are going to be there forever. Yeah, if you don't have something to eat it up, if you don't have enough of your own enzymatic action to go after this. And really healthy people, they have great enzymes and they have great uh, uh, healing ability. Well, you can adopt that by bringing it into the body. Okay. Um, going back to the heart. Okay. Statins, people that have been on statins. Now, a statin, when you go on a statin, it actually takes away your body's ability to produce CoQ10. So if you are on a statin and are not on a CoQ10, you really should be on a CoQ10. CoQ10 is essential for what's called cellular metabolism. Okay, and um, so if you're on a statin, uh, make sure you're on a CoQ10. Better yet, be on uh, what's called PQQ. PQQ has uh, um, uh, CoQ10 in it as well. It helps to rebuild, not only uh, rebuild the mitochondria, but actually build more mitochondria. So that's super, super important. Now, if you've gotten off of the statins, and the statins can, they help the heart, but they can also do damage and things like that. How, how do I get my body back on track after I've gotten off of the statins? That's creatine. Creatine is this powder. A lot of bodybuilders use it um, because they are trying to help build more muscle. Um, they're actually helping to do recovery get, because the answer to building muscle is not the um, exercise phase, it's the recovery phase. Because when you're exercising to build muscle, you have to tear the muscle apart and then it has to repair itself and that's how you build new muscle. You don't actually add any more muscle cells, you just repair the broken uh, muscles and that's what new muscle tissue is. 
And so the creatine helps you to build that. So again, if you are got some heart issues, maybe it's some, because that's the muscle, heart muscle. So the creatine helps to repair and helps to feed the muscle tissue, helps to speed up the recovery. It helps with uh, the, uh, the post statins. Another thing is uh, research shows that as people age over 50, their ability to digest protein, they tend to get need more protein. So that's why you see the old people in the nursing homes are drinking these protein shakes. They need more protein because they almost can't eat enough protein. Eh, that's not it. They can't digest the protein. Um, and uh, But see also it's the protein, it's the muscle. Okay, it's really the muscle that we're talking about, the muscle wasting. So the creatine helps you to build muscle, maintain muscle. So anyone over 50, even if you're not exercising and you just wanna feel better, um, feel more energy, um, the more muscle that you have, the more uh, healthy muscle, the lower your weight is or the healthier your weight is. So if a person's trying to lose weight, you really need to build muscle. You really need to have a better muscle to fat ratio. And the more muscle that you have, the more that it eats the fat. It loves fat. It wants to eat your fat, right? So um, maintaining muscle is super, super important. And this was all about the heart, but that heart is a muscle. And so we go into other muscles all over the body. Okay, we've got another question. Again, the phone number to call in is 313-272-5600. This is Jason Eagle, your Natural Health Authority, answering your questions on health and wellness and the whole shebang. How do I be here and be here now and really enjoy myself? Okay, so this question is on bunions and fallen arches. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that have had surgery on their bunions and now their feet are in pain, their feet are racked full with scar tissue. They can't straighten out their toe if they wanted to, they can barely walk on it. Bunion surgery is for the most part unnecessary and it's pretty brutal. It really, and again, it does not address where it's coming from. So I'm gonna tell you where it's coming from. But again, if you have bunions and you've had the bunion surgery, go back to the thing I just talked about, how do I break up that scar tissue? The phytozymes, go on the phytozymes and it will soften up those toes. But let's get to the understanding of how do I form a bunion? A bunion is like your big toe starts, instead of being straight, so like your big, uh, like the, which would be like your thumb, it's bowing in and it's curving in and it makes that big kind of bone, bony protrusion that they, when they do surgery, they, they shave that bone off, okay? How did it get there? I wasn't born like this. How did this happen? So in my practice, I do body work on people and you can take a person who's getting a bunion, have them lay down or you can even have sit down and push on your arch muscle. That's the, the bottom of your foot. Push up on that and you'll notice that the toe goes back in place. So really it's a weak muscle. So it's a muscle that goes weak and it can't go and it just, bleh. yeah, it can come from narrowed shoes, but really it comes from a weak muscle, right? So how do I rebuild this muscle? Well, let's trace it back to where it's really coming from. It's coming from the back. So fallen arches and bunions are coming from a nerve sedation at your low back. So that's gonna be in the sacrum, that's gonna be at the low back area, L5, these types of things. So we've had some sort of trauma there, we've had some brain, uh, uh, neurologic damage. So again, it's a weak muscle or it's a paralyzed muscle. That's another way to describe it. It's a paralyzed central core muscle. So it's very like when grandma has a stroke and she can't move the one side of her face, it's paralyzed. You say, try and smile grandma, try harder, she can't. She's paralyzed. Try and move that toe. I can't, it's paralyzed. I can't move it there and it just goes that way. So rebuilding the muscle, but see you can't rebuild a muscle that doesn't have nerve control to it. And so the nerve control is actually coming through the back and then splits at the sacrum and then goes into the sciatic nerve. So you'll find a lot of times too that people that have fallen arches or, or bunions, they also have sciatica. Um, and so it's you're really going to the source of this. So the first thing I would do is, is have you come in and let's let me test you for interference fields. Again, it's this uh, a nerve. It's like a blown out nerve. The nerve is still there, but it's the magnetic field that it's communicating with. So it's kind of like every nerve is really a wire, but it has cell phone. So which is wireless, which is there's wireless 
communication that's going all around us. You can't touch it, you can't see it, but it's there, okay? That's how our body works, and that's this electromagnetic frequency, these waves. So if you can repair the waves, repair the field, now you can get the nerve working back again, and then you can get these these muscles to then turn back on again and work again. And there's very specific muscles you can do, exercises you can do to rebuild that muscle. Uh, a great one is what's, it's a childhood uh, one. It's called uh, building a mountain. You sit on a chair, let's say on a wooden floor or let's say a tile floor, and you put, let's say, a bath towel on the floor with your bare feet. So you're sitting on, let's say, a stool, and then you put your feet on top of the bath, uh, the bath towel, and you hold your ankles together, and then rotating your, keeping your ankles together, rotating your feet out, and using your toes like fingers, you then grab onto the towel, and you scrunch it in into like a pile, and then you roll them out, and then you just keep scrunching, 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 um, by while keeping your ankles together, using your toes like fingers, and then you build this towel up into a mountain, and then what you do is you flatten it out, and you do it again. Most people who have the bunions forming, they, they, the first time they're like, oh my goodness, like, <laughs> it's like doing an exercise that you haven't done in a long time. It hurts it, it, because the muscles are so weak and so, so do it once. But eventually you can work up to doing it, let's say five to 10 times a day. And, uh, and eventually you'll notice that, wow, like that toe will come back in place because I'm exercising that specific muscle in order to bring that toe back in place. So really it's a sign of a, like I said, a, a central nervous system paralyzation deep in the low back. Um, and no amount of fixing it on the outside is really going to fix it because that's not where it's coming from. Okay. Boy, we are chucking off the the uh, questions here. Oh, now here's the other one. I want to get to this one. Sleep apnea. Now I'm going to do a show later with some people that treat sleep apnea. But this is a, okay, if you got sleep apnea, meaning your spouse has said, oh my God, my dad had sleep apnea. My dad had horrible, this is before we diagnosed sleep apnea. And I'm sure it's shortened my dad's life and contributed to his death. I remember going on vacation together, like when we went and we had all had to stay in a hotel. It would be horrible because my dad snored, snored so loud. But it, that wasn't the worst part. He would stop breathing. And we would, all the kids would be like, Mom, kick him, kick him. Because it would be like, <clears throat> and they would start snoring again. But he would literally, you could count it, it would be like a minute. And I'm like, did dad die? Like it was scary. And that's what's happening is you're choking. You're not getting your air. So the CPAP machine is just this most traditional kind of way. It's a machine that goes in your face and it forces you. The CPAP machine is is only about 40 to 50% effective. You'll have people that like they tear the mask off because it's uncomfortable, getting fit, they're getting them, making them smaller and smaller. But again, could you fix it without having to wear this appliance? Yes, there is a new laser treatment. And I'm gonna tell you this doctor, this dentist, Dr. Eric Taylor, DDS, he is in Rochester Hills, and he has a laser, um, what's the laser called? It is called a Fortuna Light. Uh, and what you're gonna get is what's called the Night Lays. And it's you can dial this in uh, to a specific setting. And what he does is he shines it on your throat. Because if you look at people that have sleep apnea, is they have narrowed airways. And because of the snoring that causes this vibration, we build up excess collagen. And meaning that like they start to suck, uh, swallow your tongue. The tongue goes in the back of your throat. But if you look at the throat of a person that has sleep apnea, it's pretty narrow. And so what the night lays does is when he shines it on the back of your throat and he does multiple treatments, what it does is it shrinks the tissue. This is safe. This is, it actually stimulates your body to um, grow the collagen instead of hardened. It reduces excess collagen and it makes the collagen nice and fluffy and soft. And so what it does is it creates a bigger airway and the night lays has been shown to be 80% effective and it eliminates the need for a sleep pet machine or a mouth appliance and, and all this other stuff. 
Um, so Dr. Eric Taylor in uh, Rochester Hills does what's called the night laze. It's a specific laser and sometimes even one treatment can be dramatic, but usually it's between one to four treatments. I don't know how much it costs, you'll have to talk to them. But this, if you don't like your CPAP machine and you want to have a, a fix, now it's not permanent, it's something that like every so often, let's say every year, you have to go back in for a tune-up. Um, but that is so much better than having to weigh the CPAP machine. Um, the CPAP machines can get dirty. They're selling all these devices that can click because they fill up with mold and you can just be breathing sick stuff. And, and it's, a, it's a pain in the butt trying to wear these things. And the people that are, you're sleeping with, your, your family, your, your, you know, your wife or your husband, they're annoyed by it. You know, maybe both of you got CPAP machines and you've got like dueling banjos. Like, da -da -da -da. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people that were both couples actually have it. Um, you definitely want to treat the apnea because it is, you are cutting off the blood flow and oxygen to your brain. It's causing you to secrete a bunch of fight or flight hormones. It's very damaging to your health. So if you have a CPAP machine and that works, but you want something better, go and seek out Dr. Eric Taylor in uh, Rochester Hills, and it's what's called the Night Laser. It's what's called a Urbian ND YAG laser. It's called the Fortuna Light, and the particular treatment is what's called the Night Laser treatment, and I think you will be so happy. Oh, and this is also being used for professional athletes or high-level athletes because, see, when you say are a basketball player, you gotta breathe and say, when you're huffing and puffing going up and down, if your airway could be bigger, you could get more breath and you could have more endurance. So there are athletes who don't have sleep apnea, but they're having this treatment done. And what it does is it opens up the airway. Think about any athlete, like even the, the people that are doing the, the cheating, you know, uh, uh, where they're doing uh, blood doping. It's all about getting more oxygen into your muscles. And if you could breathe in more oxygen because you have an opened up airway. So this night lays has been shown for people who are uh, athletes to, again, increase airflow um, for all levels of living, but especially at that nighttime. All right. This is Jason Eagle. We are coming into the host stretch. Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. Let me see what else do I got here. Um, all right. We did bladder health. Oh, okay. So this is the question on kids lunch. What should little kids? Uh, okay, I have a 25 year old daughter and I had to feed her lunch, and I never ever did those packaged lunches, those lunchable things. They are junk, they are horrible, they're cheap, and they're lazy. I'm sorry to shame you, but they're lazy and they're full of all kinds. And now you can get kids who won't anything, eat anything else other than that. You feed a kid on Cheez-Its, that's all they're going to want. You, you know, you got to wean them off of this stuff. Again, the health that you're, all the questions that you're coming to me and issues that you, it started with eating as a child. And if your parents could have fed you better. So, and again, look at the ethnics. Look at the Japanese, the Korean kids, look at the Muslims. Many of them, they come in with their own lunch and you'll have, you know, the American kids go, ooh, what is that? And, you know, you'll have some of those kids come home going, I want to eat like everybody else. Do not let them. Do not let them. Eat your ethnic food. So what is good lunch? Is real food. Okay, and uh, I don't care how old your kids are, you can pack them real food. Uh, meaning, uh, even leftovers are real food, okay? Um, people that are going on these sandwiches and stuff like that, get rid of the ripe white bread. Um, you can, again, like I said, if you go to Japan and look at the foods that they're feeding them there, this is real food, right? So it's easy to send a kid with a package of, you know, again, for the Japanese, they do some rice and they do a little bit of meat. Hard-boiled eggs are good, some cheese, this type of stuff. Some really good um, deli meats. They don't even have to be in bread. Kids pick them up with their fingers, right? They can eat that. Get your vegetables, raw vegetables. You got a little, you know, kids eat, you know, even like the raw uh, cucumbers and stuff like that. So the, the rule of thumb is the less that's done to it, the better that it is. And you want them to have some real good protein. You want them to have some vegetables. You want them to have some fruit. Again, 
And don't just go with the straight, you know, like um, grapes and raisins and things like that. You want to wean your kids off of drink eating a ton of raisins. Raisins are the most heavily pesticided foods that are out there. They're super, super high in sugar. Um, grapes are better, but you know, you can get into like mango slices. You can get into um, apples and things like that. When you cut up the apples, if you put a little lemon juice on there, it keeps them from getting all brown and stuff like that. Put a little bit of salt in there too. It makes the sweet things taste better. Um, so apples with a little bit of, of lemon and some salt on it, just a couple little squeeze of that. It's, it, it makes them bright tasting, really good. Cut out the sugar. Don't feed them so much sugar. Again, feed them, feed them real foods. Um, like, like I said, you can, you can even go with some of the leftovers from dinner the night before. Um, uh, these are, you know, these are great ways of, of how to get rid of the package stuff. Like again, those cheap Lunchable stuff is they're so full of junk and they'll start to say they're trying to win you back and they're changing to, oh, we're all natural and stuff like that. They're too far gone. Let them go. Don't even, don't even do it anymore and find better ways. Because again, it's not about the health of your child right now. It's about the health of their appetite later too. You may get some whining from these children, but they won't eat if they don't, if you don't feed it to them, right? And a couple days of them not, you know, going, I didn't eat it, they'll eat it. You give it to them and only give them that choice, they'll eat it. But you will develop their palate for real foods. You will develop their feeling for real foods. And you'll also develop a ability to stand amongst the crowd who would shame them and say, you know what? You can't shame me. You know what? I don't want to be like you. One of the biggest mistakes that the ethnic people that came over here to America, like the Italians or the, the, the I know I understand why they did it, but we got to get it back, which is, oh, don't let them know that who you are. You want to just be American. Get rid of all your old ways and become American. That was a mistake because what is American? We don't have anything that is is healthy for us like this. We don't have the old ways. So stick with your old ways and stick with, and if you, if you don't have any ways, adopt some of these ways to become your new ways because you want your children to be healthy now. It starts right now. And in particular, it's choices. If they learn how to like, because the, they'll like how they feel. The children will like, the children that live on the Lunchables, that you switch them out to the real food, they will feel better. They'll sleep better at night. The teachers will go, they are paying attention better. You know, the kids who are ADD kids, it's the food. That's a huge part of them. Feed them real foods, get off the sugars, and you'll start to see their, and their teachers will tell them. They will tell you, they'll go, wow, whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. So this is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. This was another show for the books. I look forward to hearing from you again. And uh, till next week, in good health and don't be afraid. That's the number one thing. Do not be afraid. Be headstrong and be confident and know that this world is there to heal you. You just need to be part of it. Okay? So till next time, bye-bye. Ask the experts with Jason Eagle of Strategic Healing. Jason will help you live a pain-free, high energy. All right, Jason, I'll see you next week. Cool, thank you. Practitioner and multiple yep, have a blessed day. Jason creates a fine-tuned and highly personalized program just for you that will get you back to living your best life. Get started today by calling 734-985-5891 to make your appointment. Or go online to strategichealing.us. Strategic Healing is located at 2545 North Opdyke Road, Suite 106A in Auburn Hills. Ask the Experts with Jason Eagle of Strategic Healing can be heard every Wednesday at 1 p.m. right here on WRDT, the Word Station. The materials and information provided in this broadcast are for informational purposes only and are not intended for use as diagnosis, prevention, or treatment of a health or other problem or... Okay, everybody. Okay, Facebook, YouTube, you people out there, people out in Radio Land and everywhere, I love you. And it is all about love. And so um, love the truth, love your body, love the world that we're in here. And again, fix this world. 
fix this world before you think about going to somebody else. That was a weird call, but that's okay. I can take them all. <laughs> and, and so let's bring it right back to where it is, which is it's here right now. Make your health here right now. And you can always make a healthier choice. You can always make a better choice. And, and then your choices then start to become momentum and it becomes a snowball. And then it just starts giving you health just by breathing, <laughs> just by going outside and being in the sunshine, just by smiling. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, real supplements is life. Real supplements is here. Real health is here. And, um, you're responsible for that. So response, respond. We were responsible, which means we respond to, that's what it is. We're just here to respond to things. And um, so have a good response. And then that comes from responsibility. And good responsibility then comes back to you and responds to you and uh, builds you a life of Wow, it's just rolling in. It's just rolling into me. And I don't have to do hardly anything anymore. And uh, what I offer, offerings, rather than sacrifice, offerings, offer up. Do it as an offering. Because offerings, um, they come from your free will and they come from your free heart. And, and um, when you offer something, people offer it back. Um, there's a story about the Indians. Uh, Native Americans here in America, um, New York, um, all over them, um, when they would go hunting, hunting season, hunting for the deer, they would fast from eating meat for two weeks, I think it was, to clean it out of their body, to clean the scent out of their body. Um, and then they would go hunting. But it wasn't so that they could stalk their prey. It was so that their prey, and then what they would do is they would go and they would sit someplace and they would wait. And the story goes is that their deer came to them, offered itself to them because it, it felt that they were right. But it also came because it knew that they were going to do the right thing with it. The law of that was is whatever you killed, you did not get to eat yourself. If you ate it yourself, you poisoned it, right? And you, you, you wouldn't be able to hunt next year. They would not come to you because they sensed that. The animal sensed your heart. What you did is you offered it up to others. Now, there were others that, like you, and they off, so there was what you offered to somebody else, somebody else offered to you. And so it was as if you ate your own because somebody was a circle. And it worked that way in terms of um, what you offer, there's somebody else to offer to you. And so you never have to um, worry about where's it kind of come from. You just, and there is no worry. It's just, Put your mind on offering the best of what you have. And it's the best of what you got right now. And it's just offered as a free will offering to the world or the world around you. And um, and don't even think about getting it back. It happens. It happens. If you do it in the right place, you will be so surprised at the offerings that start to come back to you. So, okay. Till next time. Bye.